Good evening, as is church. This is Pastor Scott on the Facebook Live Thursday night. Recovery is for everybody. Good to see you guys. What's up, Karina? How are you? Good to see you on this Thursday night. Dave, what's happening? My man, Travis, how are you guys doing? Welcome to Thursday night. Recovery is for everybody. Once again, here I am coming to you directly from my living room. You might notice the flowers back there. Did anybody see those beautiful flowers? Uh, those were given to my daughter Sophie. She had her birthday last weekend. So we've been able to celebrate two birthdays for both of my daughters during the quarantine. Macy turned 17 a few weeks ago. Sophie, last Saturday. And then Gwenna will be next Friday, May 1st. And if it carries beyond that, I'll have my birthday, May 21st. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but if this continues into late May, our whole family will have celebrated our birthdays together during the quarantine. What a year, 2020, as we face these different things. So it's good to see you guys tonight. Tammy, let me see, Scott, Loretta, Kate. I see my wife is on here. What's up, Dave and Linda? I see you guys. What's happening? Uh, it's always good to connect with you here as we focus in on recovery principles. And as we talk about, as I've shared before, recovery is for everybody. And oftentimes we view it as something for people struggling with substance abuse or the recovery world. And, and we believe here at As Is Church, and I believe personally that every one of us is in recovery because every one of us have the disease of sin in our lives, and the only cure for the sin in our life is Jesus Christ. And the true act of recovery is returning to the people, becoming that person, returning to that person that God created you to be in the first place. So that is true recovery. And, to, and on Thursday nights, I share different principles related around the concept of recovery, basic Christianity. It's all the same to me. I try not to compartmentalize my life, and I would encourage you to do the same. What's up, Vicki? Hygiene, Melody, Roxy, I see you. And I want everyone on here to know that God sees you. He knows what you're going through. And uh, the topic I wanted to cover tonight is along the lines of gratitude, especially as we are um, looking at this gratitude piece. Uh, Marla says she can't hear me. Can you guys hear me as I talk about gratitude and the attitude of gratitude, which is very important during this time of quarantine, this time of uh, lockdown, stay home, stay safe. And also those of you who are, who are helping others who are still working out on the front lines, there's a lot of stress associated with these things. And I just want to take a few minutes tonight, now that we're up and running, and say, let's talk about an attitude of gratitude because a lot of us are facing stress, anxiety. Uh, from what I understand, there's a lot of relapse happening a lot of us have achieved isolation. Let me tell you something. You cannot achieve relapse unless you isolate from your support. As you move away from trusting God and others, you move towards relapse. And that is a place of isolation and doing life on your own. And so we do not want to end up there. So I want to ask you a question tonight. You just stop here for a second, and I want you to remember, just, just reflect for a second, can you think back in your mind and remember someone who was there for you, someone who had a positive impact on your life? At some point in your life, think of that one person, or maybe there's many that had a positive impact in your life, and maybe that person spoke words was there with you. Maybe it was a teacher, a parent, a grandparent, a friend. 
And that person, just during that season of life, had a positive impact on you. Who was that for you? And if you want to share that in the comments, we'd love to know. Maybe you could just put a first name. I think it's important that we, we remember, especially during difficult times, that there were people there for us during the difficult seasons of life. And possibly we were there for other people during the difficult seasons of life. Who was there for you? Tammy says her dad was there for her during a difficult part of her life or during a season of life. Her father, wow, that is a huge blessing to have your father as someone who was there during that season, maybe as a mentor, a friend. Uh, Scott says it was Bob. Shea says Myron and John. I want to tell you a story, then I, I kind of want to talk about this a little bit. What brought this topic to my attention uh, was a practice that I try to uh, do within my own life. I try to remember and even recognize and let the people know from my past in the present that they've had a positive impact in my life. And a, f a friend of mine posted that his father had passed away today. And he wrote this story in tribute to his father. And he mentioned his father's friend was a man named Fred Halevis. And I'm like, I remember Fred Halevis. Fred Halevis was instrumental in my life. And I went on to tell this person, this friend of mine, how Fred Halevis over at Sam Barlow High School had a positive impact on my life. When I moved from Klamath Falls, Oregon to Gresham, Oregon, when I was 18 years old, I had completely destroyed my life. I had been expelled from high school. I was in jail. I spent my 18th birthday in jail. I was a troublemaker. I was this close to going to prison for five years. One more thing and I was done. I was on probation. I had to get out of Klamath Falls. My life is, I was gonna be dead if I didn't get out of there. My mom said, move on up here. So I moved up to Gresham and uh, lived with her and my stepfather and my sisters. And at that point in my life, it was 1991. So that's quite a few years ago. At that point in my life, I had nothing going for me. I wasn't gonna return to school. I was already in jail. I was a troublemaker. I was on a very high level of uh, supervision. I had restitution to pay. I, I just, my life was a mess. And my next door neighbor, or the next door neighbor to the people that lived next to my mom and stepdad and where I was living, this young lady, her name was Julie, she was going to finish her senior year at Barlow. And I told her, I'm not going back to school. I'm not going back to Barlow. I'm not gonna go on the five-year plan. I'm way too good for that. What pride, what arrogance, what stupidity. Because I was afraid to reveal all the issues I had. But Julie prayerfully encouraged me to join her. And we went out to Sam Barlow High School in 1991. And the Dean of Students, I think that, that was his role, I had to meet with him because I wasn't even allowed to go back to school unless it was approved through my probation officer, my PO. And Mr. Halevis sat down with me and he treated me like a son. And he said, Scott, I will support you. And he researched it, we researched together and I had enough credits if I would commit one year, my senior year, my fifth year, of high school at Sam Barlow, I could graduate. And I had to be accountable to my PO, my probation officer, and Mr. Halevis said he would do that for me. He would be the contact of accountability with my PO from Multnomah County. And he was there and he stood in the gap for me and he interceded for me. And during that whole fifth year senior, uh, Mr. Halevis walked it out with me, and I was able to graduate from San Barlow High School. 
Actually, some of you may know I was Mr. Barlow, fifth year senior. It was a good year for me, but none of that would have happened if it wasn't for Fred Halevis, who has since passed away, standing in the gap, believing in me. And I wasn't perfect, but he was there walking with me through that. And I think back with fond memories of how God has sent so many people into my life um, and walked with me and stood in the gap. And, and a lot of the people I didn't appreciate at the time. And I know many of you, you've probably had people who've come into your life, maybe it was a coach, a teacher, a friend, a grandparent who was there, who was supporting you, encouraging you, and loving you, even though you were in relapse, even though you were rude, even though you were lying to their face, and they probably knew it, but they still saw beyond the behavior, and they saw your heart, and they saw your potential, and they still walked it out with you. Who was that for you? How did they treat you? And how, what was the effect it had on you? Who was that for you? The people like Fred Halevis for me, Mickey Malkus, who really invested in my life uh, when I was a young Christian, early in marriage, turning back to him. There's so many, I, I can think of at least 20 or 30 people that I thought that, that had impacted my life for the good, but at the time I didn't realize it. And actually there was a point in my life when I looked back and said, there was no one there for me. No one, it was pure negativity. No one was there. I had to make it on my own. I'm in this by myself. Those were all false beliefs. But when I actually had eyes to see these spiritual eyes, these eyes of discernment, God had placed people strategically in my life. And unfortunately, at the time, I didn't appreciate them. But one of the things I did over the years, especially when I really started maturing in Christ and started getting this attitude of gratitude, I started reaching out, not only making amends to the people that I had hurt along the way, and that was a long list, but also reaching out to those who had been there and said, thank you. And I, and I wrote it out. Thank you for how you were there. I didn't realize it at the time, but I'm so grateful for the investment that you made in me. And some of those people, some of those people were just there for a short period of time. And many of my mentors, just to be honest with you, they were very busy people. People that I looked up to, people that represented the life I wanted. And those people, the men, the women who gave me part of their time, I'm so grateful now. Because when people give you part of their life and they give you part of their time and they, they invest in you, they're giving part of themselves to you. Those mentors, those teachers, those coaches. So who tonight can you remember who has been there for you along the way? We all have someone. If you just got a pen, just for a second, would you please write those names down? And if they're not with us anymore, would you just praise God and thank him for those people in your life? And if they're still alive and they're still uh, connected to you somehow, or you can reach out to them, would you please, during this time of quarantine, reach out to those people and say thank you for being there? And I think you'll be surprised. If you'll pray about this and ask God to reveal those people to you, uh, you'll be surprised at how many people have actually been there for you. And you know what scripture tells us? I love what, what the, the message paraphrase of 2 Corinthians 1.3, it says this, you might wanna write this down. It says this, God comes alongside us when we go through hard times and before you know it, he brings us alongside someone else who is going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. Oh man. Unfortunately, people don't appreciate it when you're there for them. And that's a mature, um, loving response. And one of the things that I enjoy doing now that I'm in a better place years down the road is being there for others. 
I know I'm not there perfectly. I try to give what I can. There's a lot of people involved in our lives. But I believe in the principle of mentorship, of sponsorship. That's what it, in the recovery world, you find a sponsor, someone who's been there for you, and they help walk you through the steps. In Christianity, it's called discipleship. In, in the world that we live in, it's called mentorship. All those types of principles, big brothers, big sisters, coaches, whatever it is. We need those type of people in our lives. We all need people who are investing in us. At least three mentors, at least three people. And we should be investing and giving away our lives and showing others a way out as well. And that doesn't stop just because we're in quarantine. I want to encourage you to reach out to those who were there for you along the way. Another thing I want to share with you tonight, as you think about these people who were there for you, maybe it was a mentor, when you think about what they did and the effect that it had on you, man, that's powerful. We do a, we do a mentor exercise within our facilitator training here at As Is Church where we train small group facilitators and I have people go through and list down who this person was that had a positive impact in their life and then write down the effect that it had on them. And maybe you can do this even after we're off this call tonight. But for example, some people would say, what this person did for me is that they didn't judge me and the effect that it had on me was that I felt accepted and I began to trust them. I began to learn how to trust again. And you know, we have defined recovery as learning to trust again. Other things that people have said about mentors, this person loved me and that motivated me to change. This person trusted me and that, that encouraged me to do the right thing. This person devoted their time to me. That made me feel valued again. This person had a genuine interest in me and that encouraged me and ex to, to step out of my fear and walk in faith. This person loved me. They were patient with me. They, they walked their talk. They were gentle. They were kind to me. They made me feel important, felt valued and trusted. What I want you to know and what I want to leave you with tonight is this. These people that had such great impact on our lives and maybe you, maybe you've had a great impact on people's lives I want you to just listen to this. This is the takeaway. This is the bottom line. This is the key thought. Those people, it was not what they knew. It was who they were. It's not what they, uh, it's not what they know, but it's who they were that changed your life. In other words, who you are is more important than what you know. Those people in your life, it wasn't all this great information and lectures and all this stuff. It was their presence in your life. It's not what they know. It's not their training. It's not their full, like, wow, he had three degrees on the wall. That's how that, that's how that changed my life. No, this person invested in me. They believed in me. They were there for me. And guess what? Every single one of us can be someone who has a positive impact on someone else because it's not what we know, it's what we do. It's our presence in people's lives. Tonight, think through those people that were there for you. Tonight, you, many of you that are listening, you are the person that's making a positive impact on people's lives. And you may think, man, I have nothing to offer. You have so much to offer, even during this time of quarantine, even when you don't feel like ah, giving of yourself, just your presence alone changes lives. So be present. And I want to tell you, we can all look to Jesus as the one who truly was there for us when no one else was. Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, the one who makes all things new. He laid down his life. He was there for you and for I. For me before the beginning of the world he was there in creation not only that he came as a man he lived perfectly he was beat down he didn't deserve it but he laid down his life for you and for me 
and he was put to death. And the punishment that he received was the payment for all sin for eternity. And when we put our faith in him, we know that he's had a positive impact on our lives, not only for today, but for eternity. And not only that, he might have died, but he rose again and he's living today and he's living in each and every one of us. The Holy Spirit is transforming us, those of us who are believers. And I want to encourage you to put your trust in him if you haven't done that. And tonight, remind you to think about those who were there before you, those who walked this out with you. And right now, just thank God that you've, you're still here, you, you're still in the game, and God has a great plan for your life. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for everyone on here, and I thank you for those who walked with each person here during the different seasons of life, during the ups, during the downs, people that you've sent that walked us through the valleys, those that we celebrated the victories. I thank you right now, Lord, for each person that's listening. I pray that you'd fill their minds with images and memories of those who were there for them, having a positive impact. Father, we know they're there, and tonight each one of us is going to have an attitude of gratitude, and we're going to thank you, Father, for how you've blessed us in the midst of the storm, even right now, God, the fact that we can connect virtually through online means, Lord, what an honor and a blessing it is to do life together. Yes, Lord, we would prefer to be in person. Yes, Lord, that's, that's how we would prefer it to be. But God, thank you for how you allow us to connect in different ways during difficult times. Father God, I lift up everyone tonight who is hurting, who is broken, Father, those tonight who are listening, who doubt, there was no one there for me. There was no one. I am alone. I've walked this out. God, would you please minister to their hearts? Jesus, would you show them that you're there for them right now? And Father God, you've been there for them. And Holy Spirit, you're there with them. And Lord, I pray that they would feel your loving presence tonight. And God, I pray that we'd have the courage to reach out to those just to say thank you. Father, thank you for giving us time to do that, time to reach out time to share. And Lord, tonight I lift up those that are facing disease and illness, the virus. I think of Jay McKinney, Lord, tonight. I just pray in the name of Jesus for healing. I pray for comfort. I pray for support with his family. I pray for others that are facing, um, facing things that seem insurmountable. And Lord, I just pray that you'd have your way in him, in them, and those that are hurting right now, Lord. We pray for healing. We pray for healing in our church. We pray for restoration in our families. We pray for hope, God, that not only here, but for the eternity that we're gonna to spend together where you make all things new and we celebrate you together and we worship you together. Please be with everyone tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, you guys. Hey, it's good to see you. Awesome to connect here with you on Thursday night. As you know, recovery is for everybody. And every night at 7 o'clock, we've got someone on here throwing down who they are, what we're about. And tomorrow night is Family Matters with Eldridge. That's a great time. I always love connecting with him. Kids World Carl and the Panda. It's a great opportunity to bring your family together. And then Saturday night with Tara. And then I want to encourage you to join us on Sunday morning. We're continuing our life-changing prayer series. We started last Sunday where I introduced that game-changing prayer. Search me, test my heart, show me my anxious thoughts, uncover my sin, lead me. And this Sunday, I just want to let you know straight up, the prayer is, Father, break me. Very few people have the courage to, to pray, Father, break me. Break off the things in me that are prideful. Break the things in me that are selfish. Break, break me, Lord, in all humility. Lord, I want to be broken and restored by you. So I want to encourage you to join us on Sunday for that. Anyways, have a wonderful night. It's good to see all you guys. Ellie, Liz, Gloria, Amanda, Heidi.
Kelly, Daryl, Bradley, Kate. Good to see all you guys. Have a wonderful evening, and I'll catch you on the other side. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.